There is a word. The word comes to us from a familiar passage of scripture. Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to be reading from verses 14 through 30. Matthew chapter 25. Verses 14 through 30. And I will be reading from the International Version. Some of yours sound different from mine. That will be reading Matthew chapter 25. 14 through 30. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gain five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and, and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five. Right. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I've gained five more. Right. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you've not sown and gathering where you've not scattered seed. So I was afraid when I hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy, trifling. That's what I'm from Jackson. I got excited. I saw what was that. You, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then. You should have put my money on deposit with the bank right. so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Right. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. Right. For everyone who has will be given more. Right. He will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken from him. Right. And throw that worthless servant outside right. into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. God bless his word. Familiar passage of scripture. I've, I've, I've spoken from that text several times and it came to me again, so I'm going to preach it again. I figured the choir can sing songs over again. I'll be able to the text. Uh, today I want to speak from this topic. What are you doing? with what you had. What are you doing with what you had? No matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, God loves you. I, I, I can't help, I can't help but be concerned about with the current situation that we find ourselves in. It's unpleasant, it's scary. People are losing jobs and income. There's an air of uncertainty, anxiety all around us. The nagging question seems to be, who's going to be the next one to get some disappointing news? I was thinking the other day, I was thinking about the other day about what the role of the church should be during these times. And, and as I pondered, as I pondered what our role might be and, and 
how I might address the situation as a preacher and pastor. My mind was led to this parable that was told by Jesus and recorded recorded here in the gospel according to Matthew. All right, all right. In, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus tells an interesting little story. And at first, I, I wondered why this particular story came to my mind. And then I began to notice some things in that story that maybe we need to be reminded of during these trying times. All right, all right. Maybe, just maybe, the church needs to keep reminding us that God has some expectations of us. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget. Get shorter hours, somebody ain't gonna get no hours, and, but God still has some expectations of you. Now, before somebody turns me off and doesn't listen to anything else I say, I say, I ain't just talking about money. I've, 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 been, I've been us a long time, and I know that we all the only thing we think that the preacher is concerned about and talks about is money. But there are some other things in this kingdom business other than just money. According to the story, a certain man was leaving town. We're not told if he was going on business or if he was leaving on pleasure. All we know is that he was leaving town. But before he left, he called his servants together and gave them some assignments concerning his money. Right. He wanted them to look after his business until he returned. He wanted them to make sure that his affairs would be adequately taken care of while he was gone. Right. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. Their assignment was to look after his money while he was gone. That, that his money, I put that in bold and underlined on my paper. So I'm telling you, bold that and underline that and put it, put it in bigger letters in your mind. His money. I think I need to say something, y'all. Y'all ain't got nothing. Come on. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. So you don't need to worry about what you done lost and what you lost in the first place. I'm trying to say something. I'm trying to say something. When you read, when you read this story or when you listen to someone tell this story, don't miss at least two significant facts. First of all, the money belonged to the man who was leaving town. And the second thing is that the servant's job was to look after the money that belonged to the man who was leaving town. Did I lose y'all? Number one, the money belonged to the man that was leaving town. Number two, the servant's job was to look after his money. He never transferred ownership to them. He may have given them power of attorney while he was gone, but the money was still his. Look at what this man did. Look at what this man did. Look at what he did. Before he left town, he called his servants together, gave them some money to use, to invest, if you will, for him. To one servant, he gave five talents of money. To another, he gave two talents of money. To a third servant, he gave one talent of money. After he gave them what he wanted them to have, he went on his way. After he gave them what he wanted them to have, he went on his, after he gave them what he wanted them, somebody missed that. After he gave them what he wanted them to have, he went on his, ain't no need you getting upset because you ain't got that. God gave you what he wanted you to have. Give them the same 
a mountain. Now here's the qualifying. Here's the qualifying. The man gave to each according to his ability. Huh? The man gave to each according to his ability. Don't miss that. Everybody got.